What is up guys, Heike here, and today I wanted to discuss the state of the markets and also discuss some farming opportunities within the Arbitrum ecosystem. So if you like the content, please like and subscribe and check out the premium Discord, link is in the description below. So let's get right into it. Um, I'm, all, I'm still recovering from a slight sickness, so that's like, you know, if my voice is kind of raspy, that's why uh, that is. Uh, but let's first discuss on-chain metrics, uh, you know, because with Pepe, right, like going to like 1.7 billion dollar market cap, a bunch of other meme coins launching, uh, get, like main at gas fees have been pretty insane. Uh, like even during the weekend, uh, it's been around like over 100 way. Right now, it's under 100, um, maybe because you know some of these meme coins have topped. Uh, but regardless, like there's like no point using main right? It's like, like what's the point of farming on Ethereum? Like it costs like thirty dollars to approve a coin, right? Like thirty dollars to stake like some token within a smart contract. It costs you know twenty dollars to claim your rewards. Cost ten dollars to approve the farm token on a dex, and then cost like thirty dollars to swap. Uh, it really makes no sense to farm on mainnet unless you're trying to farm for like a longer term play. Um, but even then, right? It's like, like, what, like you know, like we're starting to experience what it was like um, back in twenty twenty and twenty twenty one when a lot of demand, right? Um, like demand for block space went to alternative layer ones, and we had like the whole. Um, you know, Avalanche, Luna, Solana, Phantom, like, you know, those L1s go crazy. Uh, but this time we have L2s, and I do think that it's rational to expect the, the high mainnet gas fees to drive DeFi activity onto Arbitrum. I think mainnet can be a place where people trade meme coins, NFTs, and you know, speculate on certain things. Uh, but when it comes to DeFi, I think it makes more sense, to, you know, for that type of demand for block space to migrate to layer twos like Arbitrum. Um, and I'll talk about that later. Even on Bitcoin, um, with the whole meme coin craze, there's like this. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. If, yeah, uh, there's like this already coin reaching a half a billion dollar market cap, a fake Pepe token, a hundred million dollar market cap. Of course, the 24 hour volume is like 10 million uh, with like almost a billion. I mean, you know, like this market cap really isn't real. Um, but, you know, we're also starting to see uh, a bunch of demand for block space on Bitcoin. Um, and like, of course, the prices are down today. And yeah, like, I, I don't even know what, what kind of market to like call this, right? Bear market, bull market, crab market. Um, but I don't, I don't really think that, you know, this is the type of activity we see in, you know, like a really depressed bear market. Um, I do think that we bottomed uh, back in November of 2022. Um, and I think, you know, 2033 is generally going to be viewed as a recovery slash accumulation year. Um, and I think, you know, generally crypto people, uh, people like want volatility, right? We, we either only want up only conditions or we want prices to go down, uh, you know, so we have some volatility. Uh, but I think the most likely path is that we just kind of chop and go sideways. Um, and, you know, we just let people get tired and get bored. Um, and I still think that in, in this environment, you know, looking into LP positions is going to be a really good way to just pass time and also, you know, force yourself to be involved, remain interested, um, but you know, earn fees, whether it be uh, like swap fees and farming rewards uh, while you're at it. And I'll talk about a Tri Crypto and GLP alternative later in the video called Mux LP. Uh, and the, also this, right? It's like Ethereum, uh, Uniswap users, uh, unique users, like up and to the right. And when I see something like this, it's like, I have a hard time believing that this is like real, uh, just because, I mean, I'm in the markets every day and it really doesn't feel like there's like more people, um, but literally today, right? Like I, 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 I kid you not. Um, I went into my uh, local bank branch uh, just to open some accounts and whatnot uh, and like do other stuff. And then, you know, uh, of course, like as I'm talking to people, like like all these people like show me their products. Or it's like, hey, like here's my, uh, you know, this fund, right? It's yielding like 6%. Um, I take a 60 basis point uh, expense ratio, yada, yada, yada. And then I told this guy, I, um, I, I work in crypto. And then he was like, oh, like, you know, like, how, like how's Pepe doing, right? How's Pepe doing? Um, and then he was talking to me about how he lost a bunch of money, he pulled all his money out, but he still has a bunch of money left in the Samo coin on Solana, uh, which I haven't really heard of. Uh, and then I'm like, wait, like, for, I mean, first of all, like why, are, like, why is this guy trying to show me his, you know, like fund product with, with like a 60 basis point expense ratio and talking to me about Pepe and Samo, right? Like that doesn't really inspire confidence in this guy. Um, but also, right, it's like, when I think about people aping into meme coins and like, you know, it's like Pepe, I, I kind of think about like this, you know, like Zoomers or like DGENs, right? It's like people like me, um, but literally like there's this guy in a suit in front of me with like really well-oiled hair, right? Fresh haircut, um, a banker, right? And like literally talking to me about Pepe and I'm like, okay, I guess this is, <laughs> these are the types of people that's entering. Um, Right, and like maybe he's like one of the one of these people. Um, I hope I hope he's not watching this video. So you know, he, it's like I, I don't really want to hurt his feelings, but like also really, it's like what the hell? Like this actually happened in real life, which is kind of hard to believe. 
Um, so yeah, main it's unusable for defined entities. So the natural step is to think that, okay, like defect activity, let's trickle that into um, layer twos. And of course, today, a bunch of like altcoins are getting turbo wrecked, um, including Arbitrum. Uh, I think it's slightly above a dollar. Um, and Arbitrum native altcoins have also been just demolished. Um, however, right, however, uh, since the airdrop, uh, layer two activity has skyrocketed and the centralized sequencer, right, the arbitrary and optimism sequencer is printing in fees and the margins for these sequencers are only going to improve. Uh, so, you know, if you look at this data, um, uh, shout out to this Twitter account, to millet um, you know, I think you can find uh, some of this uh, data dashboard uh, if you follow on Twitter, but, you know, Optimism weekly L2 fees in ETH up and to the right. And then ever since the airdrop, Arbitrum weekly L2 fees also up and to the right. Um, and recently, if you try to use Arbitrum and like do a swap, it costs like a dollar. Uh, so we still see like you know, some activity. Um, and also, you know, it's like layer two scale Ethereum in a way, um, but it still doesn't scale it to the extent that I think we, we all want it to. Ideally, um, you know, we onboard thousands and millions of people um, and they, you know, do things on, on like on chain for like two three cents um, but you know even in this environment uh even when i don't think there's like that many people that came back uh you know it's still costing like one two three dollars uh but you know this is going to change uh with protodane charting uh with eip 4844 um and you know the, the sequencer right um arbitrary monopolism that their sequencer is printing in fees and following eip 4844 this should only go up in terms of like the margins so let's talk about that right um and i think in this market like the current market is starved of a narrative. Um, maybe like the whole meme coin thing would like only happen because there was like nothing else that could pump. So people just like, you know, turned to meme coins. I mean, like, I have no idea. Um, I guess like general consensus is that meme coins tend to mark tops uh, in like rallies. I don't really think it has to like be like the, like the Pico top. Um, I just think that we're gonna go sideways and you know, bears are gonna get super excited if we go down and then bulls are gonna get super excited. Uh, but generally I just think that, you know, 2023, just generally sideways. I think the people that's gonna make the most, um, or maybe maybe not the most, but like the the one of the best strategies is to just, just like LP and also like hold core longer term positions that you know you're bullish on, um, and just see those investments too, right. Like just see the longer term and like you know just ignore the short term noise. Um, so EIP forty eight forty four. Proto think sharding aims to decrease the cost associated with rollups by reducing the amount of data that needs to be submitted to the Ethereum blockchain. And it's rumored to, I mean, it's not really rumored. Um, it's pretty much consensus that's going to lower layer two to that transaction fees by 10 to 20 X, right? So like by an, an order of magnitude, of course, there's more to this, but um, this is like the simplified versions of this. And this is coming in Q3 to Q4 um, with coming with a Ethereum Cancun upgrade. And of course you might say, Hey, oh my God, Q3, it's like, I want something that pumps tomorrow. Uh, but I mean, you know, it, 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 it's, it's really hard for me to like, you know, talk about this, you know, like shorter term stuff. Uh, on this channel, but, uh, but you know, you might think it's too early for the narrative, but also if you think about the whole LSD narrative, um, this really caught me by surprise because I, I talked about this in December and I was like, okay, like maybe it starts pumping in February or March, right? Because the Shanghai's Chappelle upgrade was going to be in April. Uh, but you know, Lido was one of those things that started pumping immediately January 1st of 2023. Um, and the majority of the gains happened in January and uh, February. Uh, so even though the Chappelle upgrade happened in mid April, um, the LSD narrative started happening three and a half months out, right? So January 1st. Um, and you know, maybe right now uh, that whole LSD narrative has, a. Uh, um, has like mostly died out. I mean, I still think it's a strong narrative, um, like fundamentally, uh, but I think when it comes to like capital gains from coins, like maybe, you know, most of the gains are behind us. Uh, but you know, like, like, but like more importantly, the point is uh, these narratives can just happen like in an instant. So I just think it's good to be aware of it. Um, and, you know, I think crypto just needs like fundamental narratives that people can actually like latch onto um, that can, you know, that, that people can actually justify. It's really hard for me to be super bullish either just because you know, people are buying Pepe. Um, but, you know, if protodank sharding can enable more types of applications, more use cases, and also onboard more people um, and make L2s cheaper to use, then I think that can actually be some narrative um, on the also, right? Um, I, I talked about this earlier, but, um, you know, as it becomes cheaper for uh, these sequencers to settle on mainnet, uh, the, the margins for these sequencers tend to improve. Uh, and though the Arbitrum token holders can't really benefit from improved margins uh, for the sequencer, maybe that can be a narrative, right? It's one of the few, I mean, I mean going back to this, right? It's like one of the few, you know, I guess, 
layer ones, I mean layer twos, uh, that's actually you know accruing more fees and making money. Uh, so I still think it's you know really important to you know keep track of this type of stuff uh, and be and, you know start thinking about okay what kind of tokens can benefit if Arbitrum does well. Of course Arbitrum is nuking, but uh, you know if, this is like looking at it fundamentally, right? It's like uh, if you look at the top trades, Arbitrum gaining TVL, um, it's actually at all time highs. Uh, led by Kronos Finance, which I'll talk about later in the video. Um, but you know, it seems like more and more money is flocking towards Arbitrum, uh, which makes sense, right? It's like you can't really do anything on mainnet, so like, like where else can you do it, right? Like, like no one's going to go to like some most of these all to all chains because there's not much to do. Um, and I think the only place that has some resemblance and hope for I guess tokens going up is Arbitrum, just because you know they just dropped a token. These DAOs have, you know, their airdrop allocations, and at some point later in the year, I do expect Arbitrum, uh, the DAO, to do ecosystem incentives. So whether it be to like, you know, uh, paying people to borrow and land on Aave, LP on Curve, uh, and I think that's going to bring in more excitement, uh, and maybe it makes sense to start thinking about, okay, if Arbitrum does well, which types of tokens will do well? Okay, so that's kind of like my mindset. Um, yeah, so you know, like. When it comes like to, to, like these DAOs, like most of them haven't really done much. Um, some of these protocols, like GMX, they got their token, like the Arbitrum token. Uh, they said that they're going to use it for governance. I think most of like the legitimate protocols, right? They're probably not going to sell or, or like do anything with it. Uh, they're probably going to just keep like hold on to it and like vote and be like an active governor. Um, of course, we've seen some other DAOs like Trident DAO and Cat Finance. They took their airdrop and just like dumped it. Uh, so I guess like this is like the risk that. Um, I face as like an arbitrum bull, um, but you know, I mean, this is bound to happen. Um, and you know, if if the arbitrum token can't withstand some DAOs like just selling these tokens, uh, then I like don't think that's like there's like much upside to begin with. Um, but I do think that you know arbitrum is going to be one of those tokens that's going to do relatively well. Of course, it's already starting out at a pretty high market gap. Um, but you know, I, I I do think that the arbitrum and OP token narrative uh, can start picking up in the next coming months. Um, and you know, the LSD narrative started uh, three and a half months before the Chappella upgrade. So, you know, if uh, the Cancun upgrade is, you know, slated in, let's say, late Q3, or I mean, we don't really know the timing, uh, you know, like let's say, you know, mid to late Q3, then perhaps, uh, you know, the proto dank sharding narrative for L2 tokens can begin in late Q2. Um, and if this coincides with Arbitrum incentives, right, the ecosystem incentives, then maybe uh, this entire ecosystem should be looked at. So let's talk about Mux protocol. Um, full disclosure, I do own some of the token, um, but I'll make a case on why I think Mux LP, which is like the GLP equivalent, is more interesting than the, to than the token itself. Um, and I'll talk about like the tokenomics and like why they're inferior to, you know, things like GMX. Uh, so Mux is interesting because you know, I've never heard of this protocol um, initially when I, you know, discovered it like like a, like a month ago or like a few weeks ago. Um, but actually, uh, they pivoted from this product called MC Dex in 2019. But MC Dex, I recognize. Um, I remember back in 2020, I was checking out like L2s, um, or maybe it was like early 2021. But you know, uh, MC Dex was this like super Chinese Dex on Arbitrum, and like I had to use Google Translate. It was like impossible to use, uh, and I was like, okay, like, like there's like no point in, like buying this token or like using this token. Um, but you know, their initial product didn't really do that well. Um, and then in August of 2022, uh, they pivoted it to a cross-chain perps exchange, so a fork of GMX with some twists, which I'll talk about, and they're you know, recently getting a lot of uh, traction. So volume, right, uh, doing pretty well. Um, they aggregate volume through GMX, GNS, and their protocol. Uh, so their real volume um, that you know they generate money off of is like the blue line. Uh, but you know, it's generally trending up. And then Mux LP, which is a GLP equivalent, up only in TVL and then I guess like in Mux LP, right? Uh, price is doing fine. And recently, uh, open interest in the protocol is you know at all time highs. So you know I think it's worth looking at. Um, but like let's talk about like why I think this benefits from the Arbitrum token um, because there's been so many GMX works that's done decently but like have nuked in price. So like what makes this different? Um, and to be honest, like it might not be that different, right? Like it might not be a good token. Uh, like at all, uh, but let me like just make a case for it and why I think it's interesting. So, uh, of course, GMX right now doesn't uh, on Arbitrum. They don't list the Arb uh, the Arb token, uh, just because you know the GMX protocol is so large that you know they have to move really slowly. Um, and introducing a new you know, token into the GOP basket is going to introduce some risks. So, if you want to trade Arbitrum on leverage, uh, the only places to do it is on gains and mux. And on the left hand side here, uh, this is the uh, amount of uh, trading volume in the last three days. 
and Arbitrum has uh, done roughly half a billion dollars worth of volume. And on the right hand side here, you see the metrics for GNS, and it's only done $7 million worth of volume. So it seems like Mux is the place where people trade Arbitrum on leverage. So naturally, I expect, hey, if Arbitrum, let's say, goes up 50% in price over the next one, two, three months, I would expect the metrics for Mux to only improve. Um, because if Arbitrum is going up, then naturally people are going to want to, you know, like buy it on leverage. And then like where else, like, like where do you do it, right? Uh, and the most liquid place to do it is on Mux. Um, and I'll talk about like the whole Mux LP basket there. And so th th that's primarily been the growth driver. They were the first purpose exchange to list ARB. Um, and, you know, it was like, uh, and they really helped them like, you know, gain, gain more traction, gain volume. Um, and what we learned from uh, the Joe token, and, you know, the, the Joe token is also like nuked in price, uh, but, you know, it like, it, it like went up like 5x, right? Um, before, uh, since like before, like the whole Arbitrum airdrop. And I guess like the lessons there uh, is that, you know, most Arbitrum native altcoins, sure, they like pumped whenever the airdrop was announced, but it kind of retraced the entire move. Um, but the token that benefited the most was Joe and MCB. And the reason is because Joe was where people were LPing on Arbitrum, right? In my last video, I talked about, you know, LPing um, on uh, Trader Joe's liquidity book. Uh, and similarly, I think the platforms that's going to benefit the most from Arbitrum price going up are just like the platforms that's going to enable Arbitrum trading, right? It's like Arbitrum price going up isn't going to make people trade options on Dopex, right? It's not going to make people, um, I don't know, like mint stable coins on Vesta or something, right? It's not really going to do any of that. Uh, but if people are speculating on ARB, then it's natural to expect these decentralized exchanges to benefit. Um, and I think Joe and MCB are decent tokens. Um, not, I mean, not great. Um, I'm not sure about the risk reward, um, but I think LPing makes a lot more sense, which I want to you know, push more up. So this is like the Mux LP. It's similar to GL, uh, GLP. I think the only difference is that, uh, I guess, in terms of fees or like rates, uh, the ETH APR is much higher, um, and you know this gets updated, um, I believe, every few days or like every week. Uh, there's also like this Mux APR, which I'll talk about later, and then I can kind of zoom. I mean, let me actually go to the application so you can kind of see it. So Mux LP is cross chain, um, and I'll discuss all that later. But uh, they contain more uh, like crypto assets, so it's a lot riskier. I'm not sure why it's not loading. Um, it's kind of slow, but let's see. Yeah, so it's similar to GLP. It's like you know, twenty six percent ether, thirteen percent BTC, ten percent Arbitrum, two and half, like two point two percent AVAX, BNB, OP, FTM, and then I think it's like forty four percent stable coins. Uh, but as you can see, it's like a bunch of these bridged stable coins from all these different chains. So you know, there's always the risk that hey, like if the avalanche bridge gets exploited, then like what's going to happen to Mux LP? I don't know. Probably not great. Uh, so there's increased risks. Uh, but you know, with increased risks, uh, there are some advantages. So let's talk about that. Um, and you know, the rates are pretty good. Uh, this used to be like seventy percent, but it got really diluted because you know, Mux LP, uh, you know, the, the TBL went up straight up. Uh, so let's talk about the token. Like, so MCB is the token, right? The, pl the platform token. Uh, you can lock your MCB, and and it's like the VE model, which I'm not a fan of. But uh, let me just talk about this. Uh, you can lock MCB to get VE Mux, and it's gonna earn you Mux as the yield, um, as well as ETH. And Mux is similar to escrow GMX. So if you farm Mux with Mux LP, for example, uh, you can vest your Mux um, by leaving your Mux LP in there. Um, and then, you know, if you have Mux LP, you get ETH and Mux uh, as rewards, and then you, know, you can vest it over uh, 12 months. Um, and, you know, you can get your Mux back as MCV. It's kind of confusing, but, you know, you can, I mean, it's not even it's You can lock your MCV for two, to, two weeks to four years to get VE Mux. And you can stake your VE Mux to get Mux and Ether. Uh, and then you can vest your Mux to get MCB. Uh, so, you know, MCB is like GMX and Mux is like escrow to GMX. Uh, and if you kind of think about, about it like that, it's, it makes it a lot simpler. Um, but like the whole VE Mux model is kind of annoying. Um, well, yeah, so, uh, but, you know, b before I get into that, let's talk about like the whole cross chain thing. Uh, and I think this is pretty interesting. Um, so, for example, uh, let's say the pools on Arbitrum, Avalanche, BSE, and Phantom each hold 10 ETH of liquidity. Um, and, you know, 5 ETH are currently reserved for active positioned, uh, positions. And I guess, like, the problem with GMX uh, is that, you know, if the open interest on Avalanche is, like, fully capped, uh, GMX can't really tap into the liquidity on Arbitrum because each um, chain is isolated, right? The liquidity is isolated on each chain. We know, which is fine, uh, to be honest. Um, but, like, but I guess, like, that's one of the problems. But 
The difference with MUX is that they have this thing called universal liquidity, uh, where they have their own centralized thing called dark oracles, um, and it's going to allow for you know this unified liquidity. So you know even though you know these individual chains only have 10 ETH, um, if a trader on Arbitrum wanted to place a 20 ETH long, uh, I mean traditionally you can't really do that, but uh, it will be enabled on MUX just because you know uh, it kind of unifies the liquidity. So it, it, the universal liquidity is 40 ETH because there's 10 ETH on all these four chains, and then you know using the dark oracle, uh, the you know the market maker slash protocol will allow you to open a 20 ETH long trade. So that's kind of how it works. Um, there is a risk. There's there's a bunch of centralization risks. So they have their own oracle, um, GMX gains, they use Chainlink. Um, so that, I mean, that's like an open oracle. Uh, but in order to, for them to facilitate this universal liquidity model, uh, this cross-chain liquidity, aggregating liquidity, they use their own oracle. So you know, you're kind of relying on a team uh, to not rug. Uh, you're also kind of relying on a team to not have a faulty product. Uh, and you know, if this was like some anonymous team, I would not feel that comfortable. Uh, but because I've known about them since 2019, 2020, uh, and you know, the devs are docs and whatnot, uh, I feel a little bit more confident uh, and you know, like I don't really recommend you know, like you know, aping into Mux LP, uh, but you know, just be aware of the risks. Uh, but you know, for like a fifty million dollar market cap project, you know, it's like you can't have everything be perfect, right? Like you know, like I mean, to be honest, like anything under hundred million dollar market cap, you know, it's never going to be perfect, right? Um, if it's already perfect, then it's going to be um, at much higher valuations. So, Mux aggregates trades through GMX, GNS, and Mux LP. Uh, so they're trying to you know be like the best place to trade um, because if you want to trade. Uh, for example, um, if you go to the trade tab, um, you know, and you wanted to lever long, I don't know, like, uh, let's say, like mana, for example, right? Um, then you know it's going to aggregate trades through GNS. Uh, so it's trying to become like the best place to trade. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if you can see it, but you know, it, yeah, you can kind of see that. You know, it, it aggregates trades through GNS. Um, so it's trying to be like the best place to trade, um, and you know if you trade, let's say you know Arbitrum for example, um, and you want to, I guess, uh, let's go here, SDC, right? Then it shows that hey, like you know it's gonna go through Mux um, because it's like the most liquid place to trade. So you know Mux is basically a bet on Arbitrum going up, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it's like nothing really else, like like not much else to be honest. Uh, if you're bullish on Arb. Uh, the, like the price of Arbitrum, then I think it makes sense to be bullish the Mux protocol. Um, like there are there are some trade offs, right? They have their Oracle. Uh, it's much less decentralized, uh, and there's a bunch of like threads online talking about the risks associated. Um, but you know, like I think it's, I, I just think it's like a viable alternative to track crypto and GLP. That's kind of like my uh, my idea. Uh, they also have this constant protocol on liquidity, and then you know you can kind of look at um, the fee. Uh, Fee distribution. It's not like it's not like the seventy thirty ratio with GMX and GLP. Uh, sorry, uh, GLP and uh, GMX staking. Um, some of the fees goes to protocol and liquidity. Uh, so you know, I guess Mux LP holders and Mux stakers uh, receive less in terms of, like a percentage basis. But you know, if you look at the website, um, the rates are still pretty competitive. So I think that's more uh, important. And I guess like the whole protocol and liquidity aspect is that you know they want their own protocol to you know have, I guess, like, you know, just like a base liquidity that grows over time so that even if the rates are lower, um, you know, like the Mux LP doesn't like go immediately to zero. Kind of makes sense. So 30% of the fees goes towards protocol and liquidity, and then the rest of the fees is distribu distributed to VMX, VE Mux and Mux LP stakers. So let's talk about uh, MCB. Token Mux are like not that great. Um, I mean, I guess the good thing is that most tokens, most of the tokens are uh, fully distributed. So 3.8 million is circulating. I mean. A little bit higher, but you know, like almost four million is circulating, and then a million is reserved for Mux vesting. So you can currently farm Mux and then invest it into MCB. Uh, and then there's like this V model, where you know, yeah, it's like the same thing, right? It's like uh, it's like a VCRV, right? The longer you lock it, um, the the more boost you get. The shorter you lock it, you get barely anything. Um, so you know, this is like pretty bad because. Uh, when I first, I mean, this is like two weeks ago, um, but like when I first locked it, um, I chose like a two week period um, because I was like, okay, I'm probably gonna hold this for like over a month. Like, so I was like, lock it. Uh, and I was kind of kind of lazy, right? Um, but basically like if you lock it for two weeks, you get like you know, this much VE mux. Uh, so, you know, you're not really getting like the 28% APR that uh, they're advertising. 
Um, and at the time, I had like a 50% APR, but given that you know I'm only getting that much, uh, I'm effectively getting a 0.5% APR. Um, and for me to lock up my tokens for a 0.5% APR, like that's pretty lame. Uh, it's even worse right now because like 28%. Right? So if you lock up your tokens for two weeks, you get a 0.28% APR, uh, which is definitely not worth. Um, so you know it's only worth locking if you're going to lock it for like at least a year, which I mean at the, that doesn't also make any sense. Uh, so. This might like lower the demand for the token just because it doesn't really pay you, right? Like, I guess like the best way to earn yield is by LPing. Um, and there's also like this restriction where, um, the, like, the locks begin um, Thursday UTC zero, uh, like AM. Uh, so if you lock up your token like on, on like a Thursday afternoon, uh, then the two week lock period starts like the following Thursday, right? So I made a mistake. I locked it up like um, a Thursday or Friday or something, um, and then you know. I effectively had to lock up my tokens for three weeks uh, to get like a 0.5% APR, which is like kind of lame. Uh, so, you know, if you're going to buy the token, like don't lock it, right? Um, the token locks aren't that great. Um, and to be honest, like, you know, like, is the token even going to go up? Like, I have no idea. Uh, so, you know, it's like, you know, learn from my mistakes. Um, so, but if you divide, right? Maybe, like, if you want to yield, like, maybe LP. Um, but, you know, like, there's like no point in locking, in my opinion. It's, it's kind of lame. Um, but I guess the benefit that they have. Um, is that you know they were also recipients of the Arbitrum airdrop. Uh, they got the same amount of as Gains Protocol um, at like a third of the valuation, so that's kind of cool. Um, and also um, they were mentioning that hey, like we're gonna use the Arbitrum tokens to boost uh, adoption of the platform. Um, and they're actually, I mean, I actually think that they're like the first protocol to actually use Arbitrum incentives to you know to try to act, drive uh, activity on their platform. Right now they have this one hundred thousand dollar trading contest. Uh, so they allocated fifty thousand dollars worth of Arbitrum and then fifty thousand dollars worth of Mux tokens, um, and you know depending on how much volume you do, uh, you might you know receive some rewards. To be honest, right? Like it's not that much, um, but you know they're trying to get their toes wet. Um, I actually am in, in the Discord. Uh, you know I you know I pushed them to do this, um, and I'm glad they listened to me. Uh, and you know to be honest, like you know is it worth doing this contest? Maybe not, um, but you know, if you like trading things on chain, uh, then you know, like, might as well use Mux over GMX, right? To be honest, uh, I mean, it it also aggregates liquidity through GMX, so uh, you're gonna get the best rates anyways. So yeah, I'm more shilling Mux LP as a form over like the MCB token, right? I think you can kind of hear it in my tone, um, and you know, I've gotten a, a lot of questions around alternatives for crypto and GLP. So you know, given the rates, current rates, and team background. It does pose higher risks, um, but you know that's reflected in the higher APRs, um, and also I think there's more upside because right now you can farm Mux. So if in six months it's like a viable protocol, it's like you know thriving, uh, then you know the current Mux that you farm, that you can invest you know in the in the coming months, I think that's going to be worth a lot more. Uh, so you know I get early, I mean I kind of get like you know semi early GLP GMX vibes. Uh, so I just like want to share this opportunity. Um, you know, because I think Mux LP is a you know, pretty good farm. Uh, so, MCB, you know, in, in my mind, um, I thought I might get like a 2x on this. Uh, and, you know, oh, and I can, I can kind of go over like my rationale there. Um, but, you know, it's kind of like Arbitrum beta, right? Like, if Arbitrum does well, MCB does well. If Arbitrum goes to Hades down, then I'm going to get dumped on. But, you know, like I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm famous for getting dumped on. Uh, so it's like second nature to me, right? It's like I wake up, dump on my face wake up the next day, two dumps in my face, and it's like, hey, you know, like, you know, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm eternally gonna smell like a dump, right? It's like, it, it's fine, right? Mother nature. Um, I will say that, you know, despite like GOP rates, you know, being less sexy recently, uh, the important metric is that, you know, GOP has been going up and up and up. Um, and, you know, if you do expect like the whole selling may go away, um, and, you know, like, like I, I guess like generally choppy conditions, I do think that, you know, these types of LP tokens, like GOP and Mux LP, uh, is a really interesting, um, you know, like a, like a portfolio strategy, right? Because this is the price of GLP. Um, so the light blue is uh, the GLP price with fees. Um, and the market's topped December, uh, like January, sorry, no, November slash December of 2021, which is like, like roughly here. Um, and it's been like a year and a half since. And the GLP price, despite Bitcoin and Ether being over 50% from its low, uh, all-time highs, is at all-time highs. And you know, looking at this kind of makes me think that like, well, like, what was I doing with my life, right? Like, why am I trying to buy coins when I could have like just had GLP all this time? Um, of course, I mean GLP has risks, but right. But um, I just feel like you know, if you're if you generally view crypto to be in an accumulation year, um, 
I just feel like GOP and Lux OP is great because it protects you from downside uh, just because people tend to be super levered along. Uh, so when the markets go down, you know, you get to benefit from those liquidations. And also, you know, Lux OP, GOP, they're like roughly 50% stable coins. So it's going to give you downside protection. And also, um, it's also going to give you like upside, you know, some upside, right? Uh, of course, you're going to underperform people. That's like, you know, this is like, you know, naked long ether. Um, but, you know, that's kind of like the risk you take, right? Um, I think generally when you buy into these LP tokens, you accept that there's going to be less of a return profile um, right, as an upside, uh, but you're, you know, saying that, hey, like, you know, I get less downside. So I'm okay with that type of trade off. Um, so, yeah, I think LP still makes sense. I think Mux LP, like adding it to the menu, also makes a bunch of sense. Um, for me personally, I'm willing to allocate up to 50% of my portfolio in the trend crypto just because I think it's safer. It doesn't have like the trader PL risks. For me, GLP, I'm willing to allocate up to 15% of my portfolio per chain. Uh, so, you know, like if I really wanted to, like, you know, go full GLP, um, I don't mind, you know, putting 50% into Arbitrum, 50% uh, into Avalanche GLP. Uh, and with Mux LP, it is younger. Um, it has bridge risks, cross chain risks, centralization risks. So I'm probably only willing to allocate up to 10% of my portfolio in the Mux LP. Uh, but even then, right, I still think it's a good way to, you know, I mean, yeah, just add it to the menu, right? I mean, I think it's a good protocol. Um, and I guess, like, justifying like, the valuation, to be honest, right, it's like the token mix are less great. Um, so I'm not even sure if I can do this type of calculation. Um, but, you know, I talked about Gains Protocol back in September. Um, I bought it at like $1.25 and then I sold it at like $3.50 um, and they got like a 2x and I was like super happy. And then it like, you know, after uh, the whole FTX thing, it went to like, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it like almost went up 10x from like my initial entry. Uh, but you know, like, I sold way too early. Uh, but basically, I, I kind of get like similar vibes to GNS and like the whole thesis behind GNS back then because in September, the, mar the market cap of G uh, sorry, GNS was like 50 million. Uh, and if you look at the market cap of Mux right now, it's also 50 million, right? So there's like similarities there. And back in September of 2020, uh, if you look at the seven day moving average of gains volume, it was doing roughly, you know, 50 to $100 million worth of the volume, uh, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, uh, but let's say like $60 million worth of volume, uh, daily volume. Uh, but if you look at the Mux LP trading volume now, if you focus on like the blue aspects of it, uh, it's also doing like roughly $60 million worth of volume. I mean, it's, it's super choppy, uh, so, you know, it's not really reliable. Uh, but, you know, I'm kind of getting similar vibes to, um, you know, the, the thesis around GNS back in September of last year. Um, and I also like the whole Mux LP model better than GNS. Uh, I feel like if I'm LPing, um, you know, if I'm putting my hard earned assets on the line uh, by being an LP, being a counterparty, uh, being the house for the casino, then, you know, I want some crypto exposure, right? Like if the markets go up, I don't want to be sitting in this gain style vault. Uh, so, you know, being, you know, this the fact that Mux LP gives me some crypto exposure um, and, you know, you might not be positive on FTM, BNB, AVAX, OP, uh, but you know, it's only like a 2% weight. It's not that big of a deal. Um, of course, Arbitrum, right? It's like a, it's like a bigger weight, um, but I guess like the whole bull case for MCB and Mux is that, hey, there's a decent amount of Arbitrum in Mux LP, so it's going to be the most liquid place to trade Arb. So that's kind of like the idea. Um, and, you know, to be honest, like, I can definitely see the case for like not buying Mux uh, or MCB. Um, my idea was, okay, like maybe I can get like a 2 or 3x in like the most optimistic scenario on Mux, and then I can rotate the profits into Mux LP. Uh, I, might, I might not even get there, right? I might just get dumped on, uh, which I'm okay with, uh, but that's kind of the idea. Uh, you yeah, know, like we'll see if that makes sense. Uh, but let's talk about uh, this other protocol um, because Kronos, this other protocol, um, yeah, if you go to Arbitrum, uh, TVL is up, is at all time highs. Um, and if you go to Kronos, it recently launched with emissions and the TVL went from zero to quarter of a billion real fast. Um, and it's kind of stagnated, but let's talk about you know, why I think this is an interesting farm potentially. Uh, it's a solid leaf fork, and I know people get tired of solid leaf forks, but they do have an interesting twist. Uh, generally, I think solid leaf forks are really good at capturing TVL, but it's really, really bad at keeping it. Um, because, you know, solid leaf tokens go up a lot, then people rush in to form the token, then as the token goes down, people leave because, like, what's the point? Uh, so, you know, how do you fix, you know, that type of problem? And Kronos is introducing this type of, um, or this concept of maturity boosts, where the longer you keep your LP in, on Kronos, the more tokens you get. Um, 
so you know if you LP for let's say eat USDC and you keep it for six weeks then you're going to be receiving two times more emissions than someone that's entered um, on like day one for example and there's also this element of um, I'm not sure if you can say but you know uh, you can actually like tokenize or like turn your LP tokens into NFTs uh, where a six week like a fully matured BTC ETH LP positions can be sold for a premium when compared to like a one day old a thousand dollar BTC ETH LP so maybe there's you know arguments to be made for you know if you want to farm stable points why not you know deploy capital onto something like that USDC or you know like LUSD USDC uh, frac seed state frac seed you know, just park some capital on there and then just you know you're not really taking on like the pull to risk right the, the token risk of the Kronos token it's just like nuking in price which with like, you know it, it's doing right now um, and maybe you can like just park your capital there wait six weeks and if the protocol is doing well then cool right like you have a pretty mature LP position you can sell at a premium if you want to um, but if it's not doing well then you know you can like pull out whenever um, so maybe it's an interesting opportunity um, like I said, a quarter of a billion in TBL, team is Anon, um, but they've been working on this launch for a few months now, so I think it's low risk of a rug, um, but I, I can't really say much about a, uh, about an exploit. Uh, the code base is forked off of Dana Finance, which has been around on Binance Smart Chain, so I don't think it's that likely that it gets exploited, but you know, like who, who knows? Uh, and to be honest, right, it's like in this type of market environment, it's really hard for me to share farming opportunities that isn't, you know, something like, pool one, right? It's like ETH, USDC, stablecoins, whatever, or something like, you know, like Mux LP, GLP. Um, and I know it gets repetitive, right? It's like, how many times can Taiki say, hey, you know, try crypto, GLP, Mux LP, LPing, right? Um, but I still think that, you know, that's probably like the best way to be allocated into the markets right now, uh, just because, you know, like, I think we've seen most of the pain, uh, right? If you think about the market outlook, uh, going back to Bitcoin price, of course, a bunch of coins are going down, right? Um, it's kind of sad. Uh, and you know, if you think about May seasonality, uh, May typically has not been a good month for the markets. Um, and even if it's like, I mean, I guess it like went up only in 2019, um, but you know, macro conditions, etc. Um, I think my base case is something like this, where you know we've seen a fairly decent rally. Um, I don't think we have to just like revisit like it's like lows like this. Uh, I don't necessarily think that has to happen. Um, I think my base case is that maybe we like just range between 36k and like like 24k for example um, i'm not i'm not here to like make a prediction on like what happens to price um, but generally i think it's something like this where for the rest of the 2023 just like you know maybe go down a little bit go up a little bit um, but like generally just be viewed as an accumulation here and then maybe into 2024 into the halving uh maybe like something like this um and then you know like the whole bitcoin there like takes over um and you know in this in this period i just think that it makes sense to lp there's always recession fears macro fears um you know crypto native fears around finance being sued mount gox selling uh digital currency group like like what the hell is up with that um there's all there's like so, so much so many fun events um but you know if you think about it right it's like we just like when there's so much pain in 2022 that i think you know most of the pain is behind us i think it's important to acknowledge that um and if that's my view it's like yes the whole summer may go away thing is a concern um, and you know, but I'm also not in this game to like try to buy low, sell high, and like do that over and over again. For me, I'm like more of a farmer. I just like want exposure to the markets and just like you know, just have a longer term approach to things. And uh, my portfolio is structured like this, where I have roughly 50% of my portfolio into LP tokens, um, 20 to 30% into longer term bets, 20 to 30% into short term trading stack and cash. And not gonna lie, like my longer term bets and I guess like my short term coins have nuked in price. Uh, and I'm getting dumped on, right? You know, like, you know, typical techie. Uh, but, you know, I, I still think that this type of mentality is good from a farming perspective. Um, and, you know, if you can earn yield while you're at it, you know, like, might as well. Um, so that's kind of my view. Um, let's, yeah, my video is kind of getting longer, but, uh, oh, oh God, like, our is getting really nuked. Um, but anyways, right, that's kind of uh, just something I want to talk about. I think Mux LP, let's add this to like my list, like the humble farmer on me list of good LP farms. Um, and you know, maybe, you know, the, if Arbitrum experiences some price appreciation, uh, maybe we can see some fundamental improvements in this protocol. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, and you know, if you like the content, please like and subscribe, check out the premium discord link is in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys later. Bye-bye.